What's up, you guys? My name is Starbuster Wolf, and welcome back to LEGO Arts. So, in the last episode, we did a showcase of LEGO Bendy and the Dark Revival. So, but on this episode, we are going back to another video game series in LEGO format, format, and that is Kingdom Hearts. But this time, we're doing a solo showcase of Yezora, or, uh, yes, that is what the Night Sky meant that I kept giving a hint of. That I actually looked it up, and Yezora actually translates to Night Sky, so that's where the hint lied in. So, anyways... Anyways, Kingdom Hearts for LEGO has been something that I've been wanting to get back to for a while. Uh, I originally had plans to do some other Kingdom Hearts LEGO showcases like Birth by Sleep and Armor format, uh, the Foretellers, and the Dandelion Leaders. But a lot of other stuff came up, you know, like different showcases, uh, Let's Plays, and eventually it came to the point for where I kept pushing those ideas off so many times, enough that where I lost interest and it was just like, I can't go through with this showcase. I can't go through with it, because if I go with it and my current mindset, or mindset said uh, the mini figures were terrible, so I don't want to go back into that. So, oh, I might go back uh, to, like, some of those showcases, like the Foretellers and the Dandelion Leaders, leaders, but for now, those guys are being, they're being sort of, like, put on hold, on a hold of, like, whether or not I'll actually go back to them. Maybe in the future, but until I finally decide, decide this can, and that goes in. But anyways... Anyways, with Yazora, after finally defeating Yazora, after spending almost three hours defeating Yazora on standard mode, I'm gonna have to do it on critical mode. I'm gonna come on later on, later on, and that's gonna be a pain in the ass. But anyways, anyways, after defeating Yazora, I thought you know, I thought to myself that like that would actually look like a cool character to like take as minifigure format, and I actually want to see how that turns out. Turns out. So while I was working on working on Umbrella Academy as well as Benny and Dark Revival, I was working on this, and my in this in my spare time, and with the final result, the result, I think it turned out awesome. So, as you guys know, hold your, we're going to take this minifigure, do a review in it, explain my process, why we have those routes, and then go from there. So, without further ado, let's get the pedestal out, and get this showcase on the road. So, when it came to the overall design of Yazora, it's definitely something unique. And unique. Not only was I taking ideas from when I did in the previous KH showcases, but I also took some ideas, ideas from when I did Ruby Volume 7, and 7, as you can see with, like, the weapons, as well as as uh, like some of the 3D elements, and I'll explain that in a, as I go further along. So with the decals, the only two decals on this one are the torso underneath the jacket and the face. Face. So the face was actually the same one that I used for Riku, but I modified it, and but I modified the face a little bit by changing the mouth as well as uh, well as recoloring the eyes, coloring the eyes. I decided to continue that on because not only as sort of like a joke, uh, a joke that people keep making that Yazora can pass for Riku's twin brother, but also, when you really look at the characters, characters like, hang on, let me get Riku out here. Like, when you really look at uh, Yazora and Riku together, Riku together, their facial, uh, their face designs are roughly similar. Their hairstyles, styles, they are slightly different, but close enough. In fact, if this was an actual hairpiece, I probably would have used this one for Yazora. Or Yazora. Their jackets do have different patterns, like uh, different, uh, like different uh, sort of like plaid patterns. And slightly altered a little bit on the jackets, but aside from that, or not, they're roughly the same. Only the same, the same. So I felt that uh, maybe to use the same like sort of face decal, face decal for Yazora would help, and it kind of did, and it did. It really matches up for Yazora, or Yazora, and for his actual decal, I actually made two decals. I didn't print off the second one because I wanted to make this one more three D element like, but with the second decal. I'm gonna call, since both of the characters were roughly similar, and their jackets were kind of similar, but uh, with some different detailing designs, I almost, almost went with the idea of maybe taking the Riku decals and, like, uh, re- and, like, uh, recoloring them, redesigning them a little bit, but, uh, but upon on closer looking at it, and it's, like, finding multiple different uh, photo angles, angles for Yuzora's designs, I realized that, like, mm, this wouldn't be good, this wouldn't be good, I should, I should just do it from scratch, I'm from scratch. And with his shirt underneath, I definitely went with Decal because of that small, like, sort of, uh, that small flannel design underneath, underneath. It's very faded, so you can hardly see it, but with that design, and design, since it's so small, so small, I knew I was gonna have a field day, field day, of, like, trying to, uh, of, like, trying to paint each, each individual square in a very tiny, very tiny design. <laughs> so it was just like, nope, nope, let's not go ahead with that. Let's just do, uh, let's just do it, Decal. To get underneath, it'll make it a lot easier and much more simple. Much more simple. Well, unfortunately, with uh, with like the lapels lapels on his jackets, this didn't come out the exact way that I wanted it to. Like, uh, like with Yazora's plaid pattern, it's a little interesting. 
No, interesting. Like, if you played the game, made the game, or seen photos of photos and videos of Yazora, his pattern is very is very different from the other ones. Other ones, and a little bit more tedious. So much so that, so that uh, uh, when you look at like the digital decals that I made for it, made for it, they look a lot nicer than the actual actual like hand painting and painting of it. I knew it was going to be tedious, but I still wanted to make it uh, like three uh, as much incorporated as three D element as possible. Possible. Uh, with the arms, they are hand painted as well. And as well, I know this is a terrible representation of Yazora's like little skull symbol on the shoulder. Older. This was also uh, this was also tedious as well. Yes, as well. I did make a actual decal a decal for it, but since my printer is and it's like running out of ink and uh, running out of like black and white ink, ink, I have to wait to print those out. Print those out. So I will print them out new arms for the future. But for now, uh, but for now, this is like the symbol, the uh, symbol for the skull. The skull. It kind of reminds me a little bit when I did Kire from DMC. DMC. So I guess that's okay. Uh, with the arms, you could see like the, you know, like the little like bronze like buttons on the side of his arms, or his arms, and on his hands, you could see like the little, uh, the holes in, and like his fingerless, fingerless gloves. Same thing with like this bronze part is supposed to represent like the middle. It's supposed to like represent like the middle backhand part, backhand heart and uh, parts on the hand, the hand. Uh, same thing on the other side. Again, the symbol. I tried to make it as close as I could to what real life and to what like hand painting it would be, and it would be. But it turned out terrible. You know, terrible, terrible. I did have to repaint the hands a few times because the tiny dots and dots were super hard, super hard to make. Uh, on the back, as you can see, you can see I included in like the, you know, like his folded up hood, uh, hood of sort of like uh, with clay and clay that it's. Since this method has worked out in the past, I decided to keep it up. It uh, for Yazor and for Yazor, and it looks it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, the jackets did require a lot of modification, modification, especially when it came to sizing it. And it's I tried to make it like as even as possible, but it's very hard. Uh, but it's very hard to do that, especially when you have it like on the character, on the character. So that was a bit of a pain, a pain to figure out. I'm still practicing on that, and I'm hoping that one day in the future I can finally get it correct. But until then, well, that I'm still practicing. Uh, on his boots. Yeah, well, on his legs, on his legs, you can see, like, the small pieces of fabric, like, loose. These represent, like, the small threads, uh, threads that hang off of, like, Yuzora's, uh, like, Yuzora's pants, uh, close to around his boots, his boots, and, uh, and I don't know how well you can see it because of not just the glue, but also the lighting, but he's got some pockets, pockets detailed on the sides of the legs, and the legs are actually articulated, articulated, this was actually the first time that I did of sanding not just not just underneath the way uh, underneath the waist piece but also sanding the whole leg entirely entirely I did the same thing with Audrey and this method actually works so for now on in the future future I'm gonna be trying this one I'm gonna be doing this method because it works very well and I like it and I like to have the ability for all my characters or just to have full articulation full articulation so this turns out very very nicely very very nicely. You see, and uh, with his boots, the boots just painted them simple black. I did go a little bit crazy with the sanding. You can kind of see uh, the right foot. I accidentally sent it off the corner a bit too much. Sorry, Azor. Azor, so... Uh, but aside from that, uh, this came out really, really nice. Very nice. I really like how it came out. Oh, uh, with the hairpiece. Hairpiece, this is actually... Actually, it's the same. This is actually like a Lego hairpiece, but mixed with clay. Mixed with clay. This was... Uh, this idea was taken out from SAO, Ruby, and Devil May Cry. And cry. So the original hair design was the same one that I used for Sinon, Sinon, and as well as as well Hiccup and the Eleventh Doctor, Eleventh Doctor from How to Train Your Dragon and Doctor Who. But I decided to do the same thing with Sinon and add in some clay and then clay. At first it was just with the sideburns, you know, with the sideburns for Yazora, just the sideburns, and then I decided to make it spike up a little bit more, more. My original original plan was to do the same thing with like you know, with like Riku and. And just have the whole thing be sculpted out into clay. But no matter how many times I tried, I couldn't get it correctly. And it just annoyed me so much to the point where it was just like... It's like, I have this extra hairpiece. It's roughly close to, really close to like what Yuzora's hairstyle can be. I just needed to add in a couple of clay. Uh, a couple of like strands of clay and paint the whole thing silver. Uh, like give it a few layers of silver. And it's actually turned out pretty cool. Turned out pretty cool. It could have come out slightly better. Any better like... Uh, when looking at it at first, it does look a little weird, a little weird. But when you get used to it, it kind of matches up with Yuzora. 
it is working fairly nicely. So I really like it of how it came out. Now, moving on to his weapons, I don't know their official names. In fact, I don't know if they have official names. So we're just going to call this one like his laser crossbow. crossbow. So with the crossbow, crossbow, the base of it is base of it is the Lego stud shooter crossbow. crossbow. I had this I had this from uh, like one of my Star Wars sets. Star Wars sets, and I decided to use it. Use it. The overall base of it, base of it, is fairly similar to like his crossbow in the game. In the game. So I decided to take it, uh, add in some clay on the top, pa uh, paint it up with black. You can kind of see if where I miss if where I missed a couple of spots, uh, spots, and then go back and do like some of the uh, some of the red light detailing. Detailing on like the sides of the bow as well as like the front a little bit to matching up with the light and the lights. I did admittedly have half the minds to just have it as the crossbow, crossbow with the stud shooter locked in place and everything, everything. But when looking at it more and more, I realized the, how stupid it would have looked and not entirely as accurate. And I wanted to make it as accurate as possible, so I and so I removed the stud and the stud. Spent a few minutes, a minutes trying to get this and trying to get that annoying and like launch piece out of the. Uh, out of the bow, and when I finally got that out, I got that out. Uh, that out, I rolled up some clay, stuck it in, uh, stuck it into like the slot, the slot, glued it on, glued it on, painted, and this actually looks very nice. So I really like how it came out. And then one of the, f and then one of my favorite parts about this figure, uh, figure is the is his cyber sword, cyber sword. So this, and so the overall design of the sword, and the sword. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Nero's Red Queen for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe because it's kind of like uh, part gun in some weird way. In a way, I know Nero's Red Queen is more like a motorcycle, motorcycle. But when you really look at it, like it's like the overall design of the sword. It's roughly similar. Of like, if this was a sort of like a futuristic kind of Red Queen, I think this is what it would look like. Like, like. but with the sword overall design, overall design, I did the same thing that I did when I made. And it made Crescent Rose Mark Two, Two, and I was like, I was like, I took, I took like a gun brick, gun brick from, uh, from my weapons bin, and then added in the clay and clay for like the blade as well as a few other pieces, other pieces to make the overall sword, and it turned out very, very nicely, very nicely. Uh, with one of these guns, one of these like spare brick guns, or brick guns, uh, guns. I took a sander, I took like one of the sanding tool mechanisms that's, and that's like a blade, sawed it off. Uh, sawed it off, then smoothed it out, laid it out underneath, and then glued on, glued on with, uh, and then glued on the blade. It is a little bit flimsy, flimsy. It was a lot more when it was like drying, uh, and when it was drying, and it took a couple of days to fully, uh, to like fully remain intact. Like, but it's still slightly flimsy. I think the reason why is because unlike some of the other swords I've made, there's not a base under uh, in the blade. I think if you want. I think if you were making a sword like this and you wanted it to, and you wanted it to be like solid and in place, in place, I think the best as methods to do would be like have have sort of like uh, like maybe like a pole or something other that's small and that's small enough that it would fit inside that would fit inside the sword and sort of stabilize it, stabilize it. Is it uh, with the handle? The handle I really like of how it came out, of how it came out. So it's a samurai sword. It's like one of the spare samurai swords I had. I sanded off, sanded off the blade, and then super glued it on here. And this actually stays intact. Like this whole thing stays intact. I don't need to like rip it off. I don't need to like accidentally like rip it off uh, by accident and then repair it when that happens. This whole thing stays intact, which I really really like. And then, and uh, you can see like the red and uh, the red like in between, uh, in between like. And like the design of the sword handle, this was tedious because I took a red, uh, I took like the red marker and just drew around it, and then spent a few minutes, a few minutes like just chipping off the paint, and uh, the paint like in the wide gaps, and just leaving the paint and the paint inside in between, uh, in between the pattern. But once that's done, like when I insert the sword into Yazora's hand, is that when I insert it in, and the detailing in between the pattern stays on, it doesn't chip off. And chip off, and it's spectacular. It's really amazing. I really, really love it. I love it how it came out, and this just came out amazing, amazing. So with some other detailing, detailing like the same red that was used for like the lights in between of like this gun part of the sword, and on the back, like I took like a small bit of clay, trimmed it a little bit, a little bit to match up the bottom part on a part of the handle, and then with the actual blade itself, it itself, it was just it was just done by simple clay. I did I did. I did cut off a little bit of it, 
if it's uh, matched up for Yazora's design or his design. And then once I was done, once I was done, I was done, I glued it onto the weapon and then painted it up. Painting the weapon actually, actually was sort of like going back and forth because in some screenshots, the sword was red. In some others, it was orange. And it was just like, what color should I paint this? I finally settled on of sort of like a bright orange red kind of color. So like sort of mix the two together. In fact, you can kind of see where a little bit of the original orange, uh, where the original orange is, is underneath there. And then afterwards, I took the black acrylic marker and just drew in, drew in the detailing, detailing of the sword itself, or itself. I do hope that uh, that it's probably not as accurate, but I do hope that I managed to get it as as like equal on like both sides. I probably didn't, but this this. Yeah, but it did come close enough, close enough to into like the overall shape and design as it is, it is, it is. So overall, when looking at Yazora, Yazora, I think this is one of my favorite KH minifigures, figures, because I loved how the weapons came out, the arms, and the arms. I'm definitely changing in the future, but for now, they do give like an overall design, design of Yazora, and overall, this turned out as a fantastic minifigure. So I really love how this came out. Well, that's it for this episode of LEGO Arts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, or this video. And looking back at this figure, I do plan to change the arms to match and to match them up more with the main character with the character in the game. But aside from that, I'm really proud of how this character came out. How this character came out. It was a pretty cool challenge to do. He's a little bit more unique than the other KH characters. And overall, it was just a pretty fun build. It was just a fun build to do. So I really like how it came out. Uh, of how it came out. Now, especially with his weapons. You know, weapons. I'm super proud of how the sword and the sword and the crossbow came out. Um, so with, so with, like, some more showcases of Kingdom Hearts for the future, I do hope to go back to this series. I do hope to, like, make some new characters, uh, make some characters in minifigure format for the future. But for now, uh, but for now, I think KH, uh, KH will go on hold once again. Uh, once again. But again, I'm very proud of, like, how Yuzori came out. So I'll do, like, uh, I'll do an update, update on him, like, uh, when I print off the arm decals on the cows in the future, but until then, this is the official Yuzora, uh, Yuzora minifigure design. But, uh, but, if you guys want to check out, I got, like, the decal designs that I made for Yuzora, being, like, the shirt, uh, the shirt with the jacket, and the arms, you can check all those out on, this, uh, on my DeviantArt page in the description below. So, for the next showcase, I don't know what it's gonna be, I don't know when, uh, when it will come out, and come out, uh, but, uh, but I do have a few new showcases in mind for the future, uh, for the future, so, when I, uh, so when those showcases are ready, are ready, we'll record videos of them, upload them up to the channel, and yeah. yeah. So if you guys want to check out like some of my other showcases, like my other Kingdom Hearts showcases, including some of the, uh, including like Devil May Cry, Ruby, Ruby, The Trip Become Human, God of War, Bendy, all those other showcases, you can check them all out in my in my Lego Arts playlist, playlist. And if you want to check out my Let's Plays, Let's Plays, and like Kingdom Hearts, Devil May Cry, all those other games, you can check them out on the channel. So. Oh, if you guys would like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, it really helps us. Welcome to Last Place, Lego Products, and maybe have some fun. So, anywho, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, comment below what you think, share it with your friends, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and peace out over the road. Ow! Woo! Woo! Thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. What do you guys, Moon Rises? Oh.